Wow, God is so good, isn't he? Can you feel the presence of the Lord tonight? Can you feel the Holy Spirit in here tonight? The presencia de Dios está aquí. God's presence is here tonight. I have been crying tears of joy. If I, had, if I was wearing makeup, you would see it running. I mean, it was, it was so much. Man makeup. But no, not going to happen. Uh, it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you this evening. I'm, I feel so blessed to be part of family life. I'm, I'm thankful for Pastor Terry and, and Tracy, uh, my, my beautiful wife, thanking God for this opportunity. Let's go ahead and um, pr uh, open in prayer. That is very important. Right? So let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Father, I pray tonight, Lord, if we need redirection or correction, Lord, that our hearts would be open. I pray, God, that we would come with expectancy. I pray that we would come with a hunger, Lord, to receive your word tonight, Father God. Lord, I pray that I would surrender myself to you, that I would be a vessel, for I am not my own, and that I would not get in the way of your word, your message for all of us tonight. We thank you, God. We give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. If you, if you brought a Bible, I know a lot of you are high tech. I'm still a little old school. If you brought a Bible, if you could please open to Galatians 2.20. And the, the message I have for you tonight is remember who you are. And I want you to really let that marinate in your heart. Remember who you are. And we're going to unpack that. We open with Galatians 2.20 because... It's Paul, and Paul is describing this, this deeply personal, you know, relationship, this profound relationship with Jesus, with Christ, what Christ did for him. So the word of God says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is such a profound, powerful thing that he's proclaiming, that he is saying that, that he no longer lives, but Christ lives in him. When we believe in Jesus, when we accept him into our life, we become different. Jesus says that we are, we're the old way is no more. We're, we're a new creature. We're something more, right? We have this amazing just power that Jesus gives us, his word. And in our life, we face many things, but I want to continue to dive into this of the power that Jesus has in our life. Can you remember? Can you remember when you first accepted Christ? When you were just your first love, you were immersed in the word, you were reading, you were studying, maybe you were volunteering more. And there was such this great desire of that that feeling, that power that Jesus showed you that you could do, that you could do great things. And I want to move on to, to Ephesians 1, 9. And we're going to get a little deeper into talking about this, this strength of the word of God. So it's Ephesians 1, 19. Again, if you have a Bible, please open it. If not, it's okay. The word of God says, And his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength. And again, this is a power that is demonstrated this is a power that the Holy Spirit fills us and we are able to do great things through Jesus' name. We are able to do great things through Jesus' name. And maybe some of you have bared witness to these things. But the thing is that over time, we, we accept Christ, we believe, and life happens, right? Thing, things begin to happen. And as I was praying and asking God for direction in this message, he took me to a place of a very long time ago when I was a boy. And I remember even giving a testimony about what I'm about to tell you about. And it was always about overcoming fear for me. But God showed me that it was something completely different tonight. If you're here tonight, this message is for you. God has something for you tonight. And I want you to just keep your eyes, your ears, your mind, your heart open. When I was a boy, I grew up, and I grew up in a very... Uh, protective home. My mom was very protective. Uh, we weren't allowed to really see much things on TV, radio. We were very sheltered. And I'm not complaining. It's a good thing. I wish, I wish the rest of my life had been that way as I grew up. Uh, and so we were very sheltered. We didn't see a lot of things. And I remember one day my dad was, was watching a music video, and it just showed the bottom of a woman's high heel. And she's like, I don't like this one bit. 
I mean, that's the kind of house I lived in, and that's good, right? <laughs> so protecting us, sheltered, completely sheltered from the world. And as I got a little older, when my parents were 11, they, they ended up getting divorced. And so I was this sheltered child. I didn't know anything about the world. I was a scaredy cat, always afraid, afraid of everything. And now here, my entire world has been ripped apart, and, and it's completely different. And so now my parents are separated. Now I just, I don't know how to have an outlet. I knew about God, but... I had not accepted Jesus, I, I knew of God. And so I spent a lot of time in the wilderness and I rode my bike, that was, that was my escape from everything. I rode my bike, I spent time in the wilderness and I, I can't describe it, I don't know how to describe it, but I felt God with me, I, I just felt him, I felt him. And as, as I was in the wilderness, there was a clearing and on the horizon, there's, there's the thick of the brush, trees and all. And I heard all of this intense, aggressive barking. And it was this pack of feral dogs started coming, coming for me. And if you don't know what feral dogs, they're, they're wild. So we're not talking about a chihuahua here. <laughs> wild animals coming at me. And I'm just a kid and I'm on my bike and I am terrified. And I'm... Of course, they're about 100 yards away, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty fast, fast on a bike. And so I get on my bike, and I'm running, you know, riding for my life, and they start catching me and, and nip, um, nipping at me, and I'm bleeding and you know, getting near my heels, my legs. And I'm just going as fast as I can to, to get out of there. And over time, I kept going to the same place. And you're probably asking, pick a different wilderness, right? And so this happened many times. And again, I'm a, I'm a terrified kid. I'm scared of everything in the world. I, I am only surrounded by fear. But I, I felt God. I, I felt God. When I'm away from everything, I just felt his presence. And one day, I was in the clearing, and I laid down in green pastures, laying my bikes there, and I hear them coming, and they're, they're coming for me. And I, I turn around, and I get my bike, uh, but then I stop. And... It was just something in me that switched. It was just something that I just felt God did something in me. And I stopped and I, I, I turned around. And I faced them and they're coming at me. And it wasn't like, oh yeah, come on, come at me, bro. It was like, it, was a, it wasn't that kind of thing. It was just, I just felt something different. It, was, it wasn't about them per se. It was God, right? And as they got closer and closer and closer, I, I didn't move, and they, they surrounded me, and they, I was going to say lay a hand, but they did not lay a claw, <laughs> they did not bite me, they didn't do anything to me, and it was one of those things like Daniel with the lions, you know, being surrounded, and I just remember it was one of those defining moments in my life, because it was a real turning point of not living in fear, and it wasn't, again, just about fear, but the example for not tonight that God was really showing me is that there is, there is an enemy, Lucifer, and he's coming for us. He's coming for us, and a lot of times when we're not firm in the, more, the word, when we don't remember who we are, when we forget what we accepted into our life through Christ, we crumble and we run, and we're getting nipped at the heels, and there's an enemy that is coming for us, and we're not standing firm, we're crumbling. But God shows us the power through Jesus Christ that we can do all things. God shows us that he's the one that conquered death. God shows us that he can shut the mouth of the lion. God shows us that no matter what situation we are facing in the natural, there is a supernatural. Remember who you are. When you're going through a difficult time in life, God is with you. Do not forget who he is in you. If we could please go to 1 Peter 5, 8. This is the second point I have here is talking about heeding that warning. So we don't want to become spiritually complacent. You know, all of us live very busy lives, I'm sure. Can I get an amen? Yeah. We have technology that helps us to become even more busy. Technology that helps us to pull us a direction at times away from God. There are things in life that happen to us that are very difficult. It is impossible to avoid it. 
But if we don't remember who we are and who we serve, there are things that can happen in our lives that can cause us to just crumble. In 1 Peter 5, 8, the word of God says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And that is what that example I share with you is like, if you could have that visual in your life. You know, you are someone that God cares about, but there is also an enemy that does not want to see you succeed. It does not want to see your children grow up to accept Christ. It does not want to see you succeed. It doesn't want to see you preach. It doesn't want to see you do great things in Jesus' name. All of you have a purpose and a calling, and God has something for you. We are not meant to warm up chairs. We are meant to do more. God has called us to be so much more. And he has equipped you through Jesus Christ to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to do the great things in his name that he has called you to do. And when Jesus is telling us, when the word of God is telling us about the enemy and to be of sober mind, just think about how many things in our life distract us that keep us from God. And we become cold. We can become lukewarm. That's why we got a heater. I keep two by the side of my bed. You keep a heater. And we shouldn't be scared. We've got the Holy Ghost, so we shouldn't be spooked. We have a God that does the impossible. And it's not lip service. It is an action. We have to put the word into action and believe what God is talking about. There's so many times that I hear people talk to me about God and say how it's not real, how that it's just an old story. And I always ask, well, have you read it? Have you tried? (laughs) So a lot of times people may try to educate us on God, but they haven't applied God themselves to their lives. But we serve a living God. There is nothing. There is no statue we can turn around and see where it was made from. He made us. He is the creator, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. And if we trust in him and have faith in him, we can do great things through Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible tells us we see the example of we could do greater things, right? Jesus says that. If we go on to Matthew 26, 41, the word of God says, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'm going to say that again. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know who's saying that? Who's saying that? Jesus. Jesus is saying that. Son of God is saying that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Talk about heeding the warning for us near mortals, right? We need to live a spiritually sound life. How do we expect to do the supernatural through Jesus Christ if we're not living a spirit-filled life and believing what God does in our life? I'm telling you, I'm not here to knock anybody down. This message is for me and for you. Life happens. It gets difficult. We get busy. It's hard. I know these things. But it's the reminder. Remember who you are that Jesus is in you. The same today, yesterday, and forever. He doesn't quit. He doesn't get tired. We do. That is why we need him. And I love, I love the example that Christ sets for us showing that the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak because he goes on to pray. He's always showing the example of the connection with the Father to pray, to not become lukewarm. The reason he could do those things coming down as 100% man was a relationship with the Father, the time, the prayer. A lot of times people think that miracles aren't real, but again, they haven't put in that prayer time. They haven't put in that fasting time. They haven't led, lived that spiritual life to see those great things. And again, I am not knocking anybody here tonight. This message is remember who you are. God is telling us remember who we have in us. On point three, we can do anything through our faith in Jesus. This reminds me of a great story, and hopefully my wife's okay telling this story. She's like, oh, no, what is he going to say? Don't worry. It's, it's, it's all me mostly. So we were hiking in, 
in the mountains. It's a place called Pilot Mountain. And, um, and so we're hiking, and it's, it's very cloudy. I mean, it looked beautiful before we got to the mountain part, but the mountain is completely covered with uh, clouds. And so my wife says I'm dramatic, so here we go. It's going to be dramatic. But it's true. It is true. You can ask her after this. So we're hiking, and I'm thinking about, or she says, um, oh, man, we can't see the mountain. It's completely covered. And I thought about that verse, the faith, right, moving on a mountain. And I don't, I'm pretty sure I raised my hand, I believe, but I, I put my hand out and in real time thinking and believing about faith that moves mountains. This incredible wind came, this powerful roaring wind came. And as fast as you could blink, the entire mountain was revealed. She can attest to that. What she will not attest to is the powerful wind roaring sound. I heard that. She didn't hear anything. But I heard an incredible, powerful wind. And it was just amazing because a size of a mountain, I'm sure it was a cloud. Jesus is like, work on your faith for the whole mountain, but here's a cloud that I can move for you. Um, moved in an instant of the belief. And I say this to say that she said, I wish we could see it. You know that God cares about everything in your life? Even the, 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 the smallest things, the, the things that you think that you can't ask for, the things you think that he doesn't care about, he loves you. Did you know that? You may have come into here tonight with a heavy heart, with, with a lot of burden, but I have news for you. God is here to lift that. And what is on your heart and the pain you feel, your past, the difficulties that you have had in your life, it is not too difficult for God. And he wants you to give it to him. You don't need to beat yourself up. He is here to lift you up. He can move mountains in your life, even for the things that you think he doesn't care about. Because that is how much he loves you. Can you say, God loves me? God loves you. He loves you so much that he sacrificed his only son for you, and you matter to him. He saw you before you were born. Can you believe that? He designed you. He made you, and you have a purpose. And if you have not been living that purpose, tonight is the night. Tonight is the night that you begin to activate that faith in you because if you have Christ in your life, I got news for you. You have an inheritance. There is power, power, in the name of Jesus. And in this world, we know that it's, it's not about our flesh and blood, as the word says. It's the, the, there are principalities of darkness out there. There is evil out there that is real and does want us to be consumed and fail. But thanks be to God, he did send his only son for us. And that power that he shows us in faith, whew, we can do anything. If we could go to Matthew 17, 20. Again, Matthew 17, 20. The word of God says, are we there? Those with Bibles? I know you digital people are really fast. Or it's up there too, right? Oh, okay. See, high technology church. <laughs> word of God says, he replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Again, I say, nothing will be impossible for you. Remember who you are. Can you say that with me? Remember who I am. And it's through Jesus Christ that we need to remember who we are, who we serve when the times are tough. Because I could tell you, I've been there. Going to church, accepting Christ, doing ministry, and life hits you. It is easier said than done. It's really easy to put on a smile, to act like things are okay when they're really not. God never said, I want you to fake it, okay? He knows in this world, we will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world, Jesus said. So knowing this, it's hard. Even my daughter is like, Daddy, why are, why are things so hard? Why is life so hard? We live in a fallen world. I blame the people in the garden, but hey, they did it, not us, no. Um, but we live in a fallen world. It's the reality. It's the sad truth. And if you notice, that separation from God, from them, 
<laughs> That's where death entered. And if you think about this, when the supernatural happens, it's that connection to God. It's that closeness around the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, when you see things move. That is the presence of the Lord. And when we have him in us, the impossible is done. I could be here all night and tell you about miracles that I have seen. I have bared witness to the difference that God makes. And I'm not just talking about the supernatural healing. There are things that, wow, God just changing a person's life to be kind to people. That is a beautiful thing. All of us have that capability in our hearts to do terrible things or great things. And the difference between all of that is Christ and keeping God active in our hearts and in our lives. We cannot become complacent. You know what complacency is? It's the whole frog in the pot thing. It's, it's gradual. It's slow. The enemy doesn't operate in a way that's going to frighten you to do something bad. It happens slow, slowly involving you, slowly introducing you, slowly showing you things. And it's like a person that is caught in a current drifting away from the land. And before you know it and you look back, you are miles away from land. And you can barely see it. You can barely see it. We don't want to get to that point. We need to remember who we are and stay active because when you're not active in Christ, when you're not reading your Bible, when you're not praying, when you don't come to church, or maybe you come once a year, and again, I'm not trying to knock anybody, but we live in the fallen world. We need as much God as we can in our life to live a wholeheartedly righteous life. How many men of valor do I have out there? A couple guys. Okay. A few guys out there. All right, let's try this. Where are my women more valuable than rubies? All right. God, again, you know, that must be why the Bible only mentions it four times and it's affiliated with wisdom and, and, and women, wisdom, women. Uh, come on, guys. We need to be men of valor. We need to be mighty women of God. We need to serve in our church put Christ into action and not warm up seats. And I say that with love. I say it with love, trust me. We are called to do so much more and God has so, so many great plans for your life. He is not finished with you yet. You just need to remember who you are. Remember who you are. I'm gonna ask that you please open your Bibles or you can just read it on the screen, High Tech Church. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. This is often called the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. This is one of the last man's uh, Jesus says, okay? So let's take it to the heart, all right? Word of God says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things whatever I have commanded you. Not some things, all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, always, even unto the end of the world. Even unto the end of the world, that is how much God loves you. He is with you through the thick and the thin. He is with you in the most difficult times. The Bible talks about walking through the valley of shadow of death. It's a walk. It's not a stop, right? It's going through it. We move with Christ through life. And when we believe and when we accept what he has for us, maybe some of us in here feel like, I can never preach. I can never. I'm too shy. I'm too embarrassed. Let me tell you something. I, my anxiety problem was so bad, my first job, I couldn't even answer a phone. That's how bad it was. Now I speak for a living. Uh, there you go, God. <laughs> God has something for you. It's not about you. It's about who he is in you. Do not look at things in the natural and your shortcomings. Look at what he can use your life to do. Every person in the Bible that God used in a mighty way have you seen the things they've done? They were no saints. They did a lot of bad stuff, but that's the thing. God came for all of us. He can use any of our lives. I'm going to ask that, that all of you please stand with me tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end on Isaiah 40, uh, verse 8. The word of God says, The grass withers. The flowers fall, but the word 
of our God endures forever. When my father passed away, man, he, he had an oasis. I mean, he loved nature, all things God created. He had a, a beautiful flowers, everything you could think of. And when he passed away, despite my, my stepmom's best efforts, it, it withered away, it died. All things eventually are gonna wither away and die, no matter how great, no matter how beautiful, including us. But we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. He has a place prepared for you and for me. And it's about him and the difference that he makes. I'm gonna ask this of you. I know we had prayer earlier, but I just, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place tonight. If you would like to come up to this altar and pray with me tonight, or if you need individual prayer, I would ask the prayer team to please come up again. Do not leave empty handed tonight. Come hungry, asking God, asking God for something that you need tonight. Remember, remember who you are. Remember who you are and what he has for you. Jesus is the only way, truth, and the life. Come even with the heavy burdens so that he may take it because he loves you because he died for you because he has something for you tonight remember who you are remember who you are let him into your heart reignite that old fire go back to that first love you felt when you accepted him into your heart go back to that moment to know and feel his presence in your life and if you have never accepted Christ tonight, please raise your hand. I see you. I see you. It's just you and him. I want you to repeat this. Lord, come into my heart. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I am no longer my own. You are the Christ that sacrificed himself for me and died on that cross and the blood that was shed was for all generations, all mankind's sins. In Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you for being so good, Lord. I thank you for your word, for helping us to remember who we are and what you have for us, for your goodness that no man can take from us that you have a place for us in eternal life, Lord, with your precious power that prevails, that moves mountains, that you care about the smallest things in our heart and our life that maybe no one else sees. Maybe we don't even have friends in our life, but you're our friend, you call us friend. You're our father, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the cure to sickness and disease, the healer of our heart. I thank you, Father God, for all your promises, for all your goodness, for restoring us, for helping us to become something more than we ever thought we could be. Let this night, let this night be that moment, Lord, a pivotal moment that shifts in our life to not just be there sitting, but standing for you, standing for what's right, standing, God, to not be ashamed of who you are in our lives to become something more and grand through Jesus Christ. You say that in any man that praises himself will be humbled, and anyone that humbles himself will be praised. Let us exalt ourselves to you tonight, Lord. Let us surrender ourselves to you tonight. There's someone out there tonight, Lord, that is heavily, heavily burdened, holding a heavy burden, God. You have the power and the faith Lord, we have in the mustard seed to move a mountain in their life, Father God, the supernatural that is impossible for man to do. You were speaking to Palestinian farmers, but they knew, they understood that reference of that seed and the size of it and what it could do and what it could grow out to be. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for all your goodness, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, we proclaim victory tonight. We're not leaving here without our blessing. We're not leaving here without healing. We're not leaving here without your help because you tell us to give it to you. You are Jehovah Jireh, Alpha and Omega. We are the head and not the tail. Thank you, Father God, for conquering sin 
If there is a wall in our life, let it be brought down like the walls of Jericho. Let your spirit move, Lord God, in a mighty way, Father God. Thank you for your restoration. Thank you, God, for healing. Thank you for the promises. Thank you for all that you do, God. Thank you for all your goodness, Lord, over our church. Thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. We proclaim victory tonight, God. We give it all to you, Lord, all to you. For we are not our own. We are yours, Lord. We thank you, God, for all your love, all your mercy, your forgiveness of sins. If there's someone out there tonight that thinks that whatever they've done is too bad, well, God says that I have cast your sins down to the depths of the ocean that he chooses to forgive. He chooses to forget. Thank you, Father God, for all you do, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, thank you, Father God. Yes, Lord.